You'll both trap yourselves in. I'm gonna make a jump to light speed. Welcome, Hyperdrivers, to the very first episode of the Hyperdrive Star Wars channel, a channel devoted to the love of Star Wars. I'm George, the, Ma the Medina Lorian. With me is Frankie, the Raging Mando, and together every week we're going to journey to a galaxy far, far away and talk Star Wars with you guys. If you love Star Wars like we do, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you can jump to light speed with us every week. So, Frankie, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. So looking forward to this. Yeah, man, me too, man. It's been it's been a long time coming. We've been talking about doing this uh, show now for the better part of 2020. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. We keep saying, hey, we're going to do this. Okay, what are we going to do? I don't know. How about we do this? Well, maybe. Okay, yep. we'll get to it. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, it's not our fault. So, <laughs> um, it also, I want to mention too, guys. Uh, that if you are into Star Wars collecting, we do a great bit of collecting, as you can see in our backdrops. We're part of a group called the Hyperdrive uh, Star Wars Collecting Group. If you guys are on Facebook, make sure you go ahead and check them out as well. Any way you can hang out with us and all the other Hyperdrivers there daily. We're always talking Star Wars every single day. So if you're into that, you know, make sure you check that out. Make sure to leave a link for you guys to get to that in the description. Um, so what I want to do for this very first episode is I want to talk to you guys about you know why we started this channel because there's there's obviously a whole lot of different Star Wars channels out there you know and you know we're amongst many people doing the exact same stuff what makes us unique and what we're going to be doing on this channel uh, and the type of content that we're going to be providing uh, on this channel you know for the future so that's what this uh, this this first episode is going to be about at the very end we have a giveaway that uh, was been going on now for the month of April and the hyperdrive group and Facebook and we're going to be announcing the winner that's going to be at the end of the video so uh, for those of you guys who are joining us from the Hyperdrive group, thanks guys for coming with us and, and supporting the channel. Same thing for those of you guys from the MCE channel that came over to support the group. You know, I appreciate uh, uh, you guys' support. So, um, so the Hyperdrive channel. Uh, Frankie and I are are very big Star Wars fans. That's to say, to say the least. To say to the say least. To say the least. <laughs> um, I myself uh, have, I mean, you could say that I've been a Star Wars fan since before birth. Uh, I've, I've just been, I think I came out of the womb with a lightsaber in my hand. Uh, <laughs> Frankie, what, what got you into Star Wars, man? How did, how did you get started? Uh, so I am an OT member of Star Wars. So I was born in 72, so I've been around since the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I remember sitting down eating Frosted Flakes, watching Star Blazers, and the commercial came on for the movie. And so, like... Every time I heard the music playing, I would run from wherever I was in the house to go watch that commercial. And then uh, my parents took me to opening day. Like my dad, he was into all that stuff. He watched a lot of Flash Gordon stuff growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they took me to see it and just hooked. Absolutely nice. hooked. And it's been that way. My, my parents made sure I was at opening day for the next two movies. And then I've continued it on. And even with my family now, for opening day there's no mistaking everybody gets together we're gonna go watch the movie that's awesome man that's awesome you know i'm always jealous about you guys that were there for the very first star wars movie uh i was born in 79 so i missed both uh the the original star wars and empire strikes back uh in the theaters um, now my father the reason why i say i was probably a fan by uh, before birth was that my dad was very much into uh, sci-fi movies mostly star trek was what his thing was but when he saw the uh, commercials for star wars you know obviously he was interested in that he thought it was a little bit different let's go check it out so he forced my mom who my mom does not like fantasy movies whatsoever um you know to come with him to the theater and i was in the belly at that point so uh they saw star wars in the theater and then um you know, early on, I mean, my earliest memories were of Star Wars. Um, you know, I had the uh, the cassette tapes, you know, replaying the stories. Yeah. I had the VHS <laughs> yeah. tapes that I just burnt out. Uh, my mother, back then we didn't have a camcorder. She would record uh, me by sound. She had a, an audio recorder. And so I would listen to myself in the background as I got older, you know, and you would hear the the Star Wars, you know, theme song playing. And then my dad coming home from work because my dad would work like three jobs, you know, just to, to keep us going. So you would hear my dad open the door and me like, daddy, daddy, daddy. But I could hear Star Wars playing in the background. And it was 
it was awesome. Um, so I just, I've always been a big fan. My first movie that I can remember going to see in the theater was Return of the Jedi. And that was my dad taking me to go. And I was a huge fan of the Ewoks and, and the whole thing. So <laughs> yeah, everything was always about Star Wars for me. I can remember going. My big, my f- most favorite memory was uh, to go see Return of the Jedi. So for Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, I lived in Germany at the time. Okay. And um, we... So I remember when Return of the Jedi was coming out, super excited. I'm older now, you know, so I'm ready to go see the movie. I'm, live, what, 11 years old? Right. And, uh, or 10, 10 and a half. And uh, I was at school, and back then, comics would come out before the movie did, so you'd read the adata- adaptation before the movie came out. Right. So I read the comic on the bus to school, because it was like a 40-minute bus ride. It was We lived in Germany, so there was no American schools around. We had this little itty-bitty school we went to. Uh, none of those people were into Star Wars, so I was just there by myself, you know, ready for this movie. Well, I get home, my mom's like, it's opening day, right? So my excitement is through the roof. Right. Uh, we get to the, I get home, my mom's like, we can't go, because my dad's in the military. He's like, he has to do something, so we can't go. Like, crushed. And then, like, we got to take him there. So it's like two and a half hours away. Whoa. And, um... So I'm like, I am miserable this whole car ride going there. So we finally get there. It's dark. And it was, to me, back, you know, I don't know what it looks like now, but back then it just seemed like a big open space and there's nothing around. Mm -hmm. Well, there was this one building. So we pull around. It's the freaking movie theater. My mom had been screwing with me and we were going there. And then we get in, and back then you didn't reserve seats, but they had, my mom called ahead and reserved the back row seats had all of our names on the chairs. That's awesome. Yeah, that was freaking that cool, That is man. freaking awesome, man. <laughs> that is awesome. No, we never got to go to opening uh, things as a kid like that. Like, my dad would just, like, the, like the first things that I had to watch Star Wars were the VHS tapes. You know, my dad would rent them, and then he would uh, hit a two v- uh, VCRs, and we would record them. So I had, like, mm-hmm. legs every time. Uh, so that was how I would watch stories, and, and I would burn the hell out of these tapes. Um, but as I got older, you know... The, the Return of the Jedi ended. I had my toys. My, my, I'd play with that. But there really wasn't much Star Wars going on at that point. It wasn't until way, uh, you know, when, when, um, when The Phantom Menace came out, when I saw the first trailers to that, that my resurgence... Actually, it was even before that. Because I had, I think at that point they had rumors that The, that the Phantom Menace was going to come out. But they had yeah. released um, a trailer in the movie theater. And I remember I was on a date. And uh, and then it said, you know, for many, you know, the way that uh, you've experienced Star Wars was in this like tube TV, you know, and then they show the X-Wing like come flying out of the TV and then it yeah. like, explodes on the big screen. Yep. And man, I about shit my pants right there. When I, saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I got more excited about that, you know, than the fact that I had this good looking chick next to me. And I was just like, man, you know, I was like, I can't wait to see this. You know, and she's like, this guy's a dork. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, man. But um, I, I must have seen Phantom Menace in the theaters at least ten times, you know, uh, during that the time period that it was in the in the movie theaters. When Attack of the Clones came out, I went and bought tickets for any of my friends that couldn't uh, uh, go or or wasn't able to go. And I bought tickets for them to come to the theater with me to watch it because I wanted to have everybody that I knew to yeah. see Attack of the Clones with me. Yep. I saw that one on opening night. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. I, I skipped out of work, you know. I mean, I don't have that job anymore, so it don't matter. But I skipped out of work, and uh, you know we, we spent the whole day prepping for it. We went to go see it in the middle of the day. We were talking about it so much of it afterwards. I mean, it was just an emotional moment all the way through. So it's always yeah. been for me. I, I remember when after Return of the Jedi, so like I mean, that probably was kind of hard because you're just getting into it, and then like okay, now it's done. You know, it, I had a little bit to look forward to, and then uh, but for me, I did read a lot of books back then too. So we had uh, Shadows of the Empire. Shadows of the Empire. So I read that, and then uh, Air of the Empire came out, and that was just phenomenal. It's like, okay, they're going to make this into a movie. That rumor mill was, you know, huge back then. Right. Then when The Phantom Menace came out, I was actually at work. I lived in Missouri then, and uh, I was at work, and I was reading the paper. I knew it was coming out, and then I was reading the paper, and they said the tickets were going to go on sale uh, in, like, two days. Right. And I was like, well, I'm going to go get in line. I'm going to go. I'm waiting. So I left work. I'm like, I'm sick. And I left. And then I stood in line for two days. There was one guy there ahead of me. And luckily, uh, I had a friend who lived right next to the theater. 
So he'd right. come over right. and stay in the line for me while I go to his house and take a shower and stuff. But then I'd go back over there and just wait in line. So two days I wait in line got to, so I can go opening day. When it was all said and done, I got a newspaper clipping somewhere. The line was two and a half miles long. Yeah, I remember seeing that on the TV. <laughs> Phantom Menace was the only one, uh, was the last one that I didn't get to see on opening day. Attack of the Clones, by that time that came out, they had started to pre-release tickets like day, like weeks yeah. before. You know, yep. you could just go to the theater and go pick it. The minute I heard that tickets were available, but back then you couldn't buy them online. I just yep. jumped in the car, drove right to the movie theater, bought as many tickets as I could, and then was handing them out like like candy to my friends. I was like, here, you're coming, yep. you're coming, you're coming. And <laughs> I had everybody that had my, my girlfriend at the time that we went to go see that with, and um, I made her watch all of the originals before before we, we went to go see it. And, uh, yeah, I just... To me, it's always it's always had a special place for me, the uh, Star Wars, you know. Yes, so. and and that's what it's. I mean, it, really, for me, it's all about. So it's just good family time. Yeah, you know, it's it brings back those feelings for me. And then when I got to take my kids, especially my daughter, I mean, she, her name's Leia, so I get to go yeah, take yeah. her with me. And uh, we're sitting there opening day. I think the first time we went was for Attack of the Clones. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then I married Kim, and then we have our kids together now. Right. And uh, us sitting there, I was like more excited about everybody getting to do this together. And it was a midnight showing. So they were like super pumped. Of course, by like 1230, they were asleep. But I don't care. I was happy to have them there. And uh, but just for them to, whip, you know, uphold that keeping opening day a thing going for me was great. That's awesome, man. I tried to get my first daughter into Star Wars. She's like that about it. I think she likes it a little bit because I like it. But when my second daughter was born, um, that same the same day, I was like, I would hum the Leia theme to her while she would, uh, you know, she would be in my arms and then she would fall asleep to that. So as she got older, I kept doing it and she started recognizing the song. So then I'm there watching Star Wars one day and that song kicks in and this girl comes running to the to the front to see it, you know, because to her, she remembered it. All right. And from then on, Diana has been there with me. Like she loves Star Wars as much as I do. So it's it's great. You know, we go to the parks and. Uh, she she has a little Ewok doll that I got her. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I love sharing it with the kids, man. Crazy. I think that's thing the I greatest do. thing about all this is you know when you get to share it with your family and they you know yeah. they bite into it too. Best yeah. feeling in the world. Um, another another funny story I have about it is the is going to San Francisco for the first time. Uh, I I get to San Francisco and I don't have a car. I'm there with work and uh, the the person I'm there with. Uh, took and and she had to leave early so she she told me you know we'll we'll uh we'll make it seem like you have a little couple of things to do you can spend the, the extra uh, half a day here in san francisco so i was like all right so i went down to the pier so i'm down there at the pier and then like lightning hits me while i'm there and i'm like wait a minute and i was like we're in san francisco i was like lucasfilm is in san francisco that like, it should be <laughs> it should be uh uh something i could take a taxi to right you know or at least skywalker ranch you know right. so I take and I I, uh, I first map Skywalker Ranch and Skywalker Ranch is like way away from the uh, from the pier, but um, but Lucasfilm is in Presidio Park, which was about it's like five mile hike, you know, from where where I was, you know, and I was like, man, it's just like a once in a lifetime chance I'm gonna be here. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be back out in San Francisco again. I was like, I gotta go there, you know, so I I footed it, man. I walked from the pier all the way to to Lucasfilm to take a picture with the uh with the statue they had of yoda oh yoda yeah. yeah and it, it was it's and then they let you walk into the main lobby and in the main lobby there's um statues and i was gonna uh, say they have a bunch of memorabilia there don't yeah they? it was so cool man that was it was so worth the walk you know and i like begged them to let me walk in the back and take some pictures but they're like no we can't do that sir I was, like, oh. <laughs> I was like come on man it's gonna be our secret you know, what I, mean? I come from the other coast, man. Yeah. Come on, this don't happen. I, like, I told her, I was like, I just walked five miles. I'm like, come on, help me out. She's like, no. I'm like, ah. So, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I've always had a craze for this thing, man. So, I think yeah. the craziest interact as. Uh, so we took a cruise. It was our first cruise with the kids, mm -hmm. and uh, it's when we went left out of Puerto Rico. So then we were going down to St. Martin, and. Uh, I'm waiting on my wife to get ready. And uh, so I'm, you know, they got magazines and stuff there on the table in the room. Mm -hmm. And I'm flipping through it and like doing a real fast flip through because this thing's pretty thick. Right. And there was something that caught my eye. I saw Yoda. So I'm go back and I flip and it says that Yoda guy. 
and I read it, some kind of memorabilia thing here on the island. Oh. So I was like, I took it to my wife. I'm like, okay, we got to go to this. We got to find this. I'm like, it can't be too far. Run. The island ain't that big. Yeah. So she's like, okay, we'll go see it. And uh, so we get in a taxi and that day there's some kind of like national holiday or something going on. So most of the streets are blocked off. So I don't know how we're, we're trying to figure out how to get it and find this place. And uh, I didn't write the freaking address down, but I knew about where it was. And uh, cause it was mentioning other things that it was next to. So I'm trying to tell a taxi driver and he ain't getting it. Right. So we're like, so we drive around for a little bit and then it was getting too hectic with the crowd. So we were like, well, let's just get out here and then we'll walk around and ask somebody because somebody's going to know where it's at. Right. So we're like, okay, good plan. So we open the door and dude, I kid you not. As soon as we open the door, the Star Wars theme is playing. <laughs> it, we were like two, two buildings down from it. <laughs> nice. Nice. So we walk over there and it's Nick Maley. He's one of the guys that worked on Yoda. Yeah. And apparently he worked on uh, Superman, Kroll, Ghostbuster. He worked on a whole bunch of different things. That's cool. And uh, so I got to sit there, talk to him, drink some pina coladas. And uh, it was just cool, like, getting some background story on what That's was going awesome. on. I'd love to meet one of these guys, man. You know, Phil Tippett, somebody somebody that worked on Oh, films. Phil Tippett would be awesome. Right? You know, just to have a conversation with these guys to see, you know, what it was like, you know, during that time period, you know, and everything. I, that would be so cool. That's something I would love to be able to do on the show. Those, those um, creators, those are the ones that I love to talk to because, I yeah. mean, the thought process that went into it. I mean, they were doing some impossible stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like now, you know, you can you, you fall back on CGI a lot. But back then, it's like, okay, how are we going to do this? This guy wants to take and, and blow up a Death Star. I'm like, how the hell are we going to make this work? <laughs> yeah, you know how many people called Lucas nuts back then, probably? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> or they were cursing him out. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, this looks good enough. I'm like, come on. <laughs> uh, it, would, it would probably be a fun conversation with those guys, man. Oh, it's, isn't it funny how how the Star Wars music can uh, can just invoke a feeling in you, man? Oh it's like, yeah, I've been in in Circuit City or or like you know, yeah, Circuit City mainly, and I, I could be at the 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 line to buy whatever it is I'm buying, and you could hear the TV playing just a little bit of that music, and I'm like, you know, like like squirrel, like looking for it. Where's the TV at? I want to go sit down yep. and watch. <laughs> I mean, it works. So whenever. Uh... I'm working on a, where there's an assembly line. So when the line moves, it's a safety feature. They play music. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the things they play is uh, Vader's thing, the Imperial March. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. So I'll be sitting there working and that kicks in and it's like, damn right, that's playing. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's awesome. All right. So the channel, man, how, how we came up with the channel. So like I said, we've been talking about this for the better part of 2020. And we've come, we've been tossing around names like crazy. Uh, trying to figure out how we're going to do this. Me and uh, me and Frankie both have a big uh, love for uh, Boba Fett and for the Mandalorians, uh, Mandalorians as a whole. You know, so we were trying to go with something that was more Mandalorian themed at first. Uh, but you know, I felt that I wanted to be something that people would rec readily recognize that this is a Star Wars channel, and we're talking about a lot of different things, uh, Star Wars, all things Star Wars. Um, so. Towards the end of 2020, uh, the beginning of 2021, right around there, a friend of mine named James um, invited me to a Facebook group called the Hyperdrive. And the the Hyperdrive group, like I stated at the beginning of this video, is uh, is a group about Star Wars collecting. And I'm a big Star Wars collector, as you can see here. I built the backdrop behind me. Um, I, I do collect mostly Star Wars uh, toys, statues. Anything, anything that they, they remote. I got Star Wars fig pins over here. A big collection of them now, thanks to another <laughs> friend of mine. Um, but yeah, anything Star Wars, I will, I will more than likely pick it up. You know, I got keychains with lightsabers. You know, just yep. to, just for the hell of it. Um, so they invite me to this group, and I was really impressed with how uh, how much fun I was having with the, the way they were going about getting people to to show their collections. You know, they have like daily themes and. Um, and getting people really uh, involved in showing off everything that they have and their, their passion and fun for, for the whole collecting as a whole for Star Wars. So, uh, and the name, the Hyperdrive, really rang a bell with me. I, the big, one of my favorite ships in the Star Wars galaxy is the Millennium Falcon. And, you know, the jump to light speed and all that. I love the ride. So I was like, Hyperdrive sounds really cool, you know. So um, talking with the guys, they made me an administrator of the group. And uh, Christian, who's the main administrator, uh, we, we spoke and we thought that, you know, naming the channel the Hyperdrive, you know, to, to coexist with the group and, and to help the group grow and to help the channel grow would be uh, a cool idea. And um, I spoke with Frankie. Frankie 
agreed with me and that's that's how the channel came to be um, we do have two other YouTube channels uh, I have the MCE channel which the MCE channel is a channel that's devoted to the love of collecting as a whole uh, most of that uh, the, the videos that goes on at that channel is uh, collecting Marvel Star Wars DC anime you know it's very broad we collect everything from toys to statues to art and we show off all of that on, on the channel so that's been the main focus of that uh, and initially I started to bring a little of my Star Wars collecting into there uh, but I you know I realized that you know maybe putting that on and giving that to its own channel would be something fun to do so that's uh, that's another thing and then we also have the movie nights channel where initially actually the movie nights channel was going to be the star wars channel yeah that was that was the, initially how it started we had uh, too much fun though yeah yeah we had too much fun so it's like we we started off the movie nights channel with the idea of, of making it a star wars channel and we were doing reviews at that point of the mandalorian yep and uh and the and the reviews were fun the the reaction videos that we were doing to them were a lot of fun we were you know people were were, uh, were having a good time with that and then the mandalorian ends and we have a void of Star Wars again. I feel like at, like at the end of Return of the Jedi, we were like, whoa, where yeah. do we go now? You know? So yeah. we started reviewing other TV shows and then that kind of got it away from, from Star Wars. So I was like, I really wanted to revisit that. And then, so now we're here with, um, with the channel. So, that, so I'm really happy that we finally got this going. So uh, the, the plan name really fits though too. Cause like, yeah, it's, true. Uh, you know, sometimes it's a well-oiled machine and sometimes it just needs a little help. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. That, that's true. That's very true. Um, yeah, man. So we have a lot of planned content for the channel. The main uh, weekly thing that we want to put out, we want to at least have one consistent episode for you guys a week, and that's going to be our Star Wars chat show, which is what you're experiencing right now. Uh, but it's going to be live. I, yeah. I tried to make this episode live, but uh, apparently. YouTube needs 24 hours for that to kick in, so I wasn't able to do that for this particular episode. But next Sunday, it's going to be a live episode where you guys can interact with us, you know, join in on the conversation, and you know, we can all have a real fun Star Wars chat. Um, and I, I mainly want to have it be sometimes, you know, uh, the the current events of what's going on with Star Wars. Like next week, you know, we're gearing up for May the Fourth, so we're probably going to have a big discussion about May the Fourth next week, um, and you know, predictions and what we're going to possibly buy. Um, and, and that's going to be at, uh, hopefully every Sunday, 12 PM Eastern standard time, me and Frankie will be here shooting the shit with you guys all about Star Wars. So that's the main, uh, episode. Now the rest of the stuff that we want to have planned for the show is going to be, uh, depending on if we have something to, to, to show, uh, we have lined up Star Wars collections, which is going to be, uh, the, a, um, a, 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 trying to figure out that highlighting a you know people's collection rooms and then other collectors so what we want to do on that on that show is we want to interview you know collectors we want to show people's collection rooms big or small you know doesn't matter the size of the star wars collection no not at all um, but you know if you're into star wars we want to see what you guys got you know and you can talk to us about your collection how you know you guys uh you know gathered all the stuff that you have in your room and you know what what made you uh, get into it that would be something cool to do yeah, the stories. Stories, stories. are always the, the best part of it. Uh, coupled with the collecting, uh, since I, you know, do primarily reviews on the MC channel of statues and uh, toys and figures and stuff like that, I'm going to be doing some of those on this channel as well, as well as collection room tours. So one of the things I'm going to bring up here real soon is a new room tour of this room. I've been being asked about it ever since the first one came out in January. They want an updated one since I've recently picked up a bunch of new stuff. So, <laughs> so that's. <laughs> That's actually going to come real soon. I'm, I'm waiting on one more uh, stand for my Darth Vader helmet, and then I'm, I'm ready to go. And I'll show you guys the, the latest stuff that I have there. So that, that's something that you guys could look forward to. Um, Frankie is a big gamer. I am too, but Frankie more so than me. Uh, yeah. So one of the things I want to offer on the channel too is the occasional Star Wars gaming show where we just you know are playing live and you, know, you can make fun of us at whether we're doing good or not. I, I, what Star Wars games do you play? Battlefront? Uh, yeah, some Battlefront. Uh, I tried playing Squadrons. I'm, I can't. I gotta admit, I'm not good. Squadrons, at I do. <laughs> uh, they need to come out with a battle roy more of a battle royale type for Star Wars. That'd be great. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. I play mostly like the older games. Like I have um, Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, I have um, the. I, I played the MMO 
you know, so I, I did play uh, that one too, and Star Wars Galaxies. I was thinking about actually uh, revisiting Star Wars Galaxies again. A friend of mine, uh, Javier, he's been playing the, um, the I guess, the emulated version that they, they came up. Like, apparently, there's groups yeah, that have kept that get, going. Yeah. There's yeah. No, nothing you can do more. I mean, it's not updated or anything, but... No, uh, they've been updating it. Oh, they have been? They've been updating it. So they, there's, a, there's a group that actually made a new area in, in, um, in uh, Bespin. Where you can actually go to Bespin and and there's a a whole new area to go to with missions and everything. Oh well, as soon as we're done here, I'll be checking that. Out. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was I thought that was pretty interesting. The graphics are about the same. They haven't updated any of the graphics, so don't expect you know stellar. Yeah, graphics it's not going to be the same thing. But they are developing yeah. something new. They're developing yeah. an MMO right now, so looking oh. for really forward to that. True, that'd be that'd be cool. Yeah, it's something like that. I would be down to play, man. I love MMOs, so that's that's something I'd be into. And maybe we could stream that live. That'd be fun. Oh yeah. Um, the other thing that we want to get into is uh, both uh, uh, comic books, movies, uh, TV shows. So we're going to be doing uh, the occasional review of a show, a comic, or a book, something that we've read. You know, we'll we'll get on to something like that. Now the the remaining shows that are talked about, those are going to be when we have something available. The one thing that you can count on is we are going to have an episode every Sunday at twelve. So that's that's what we want to like at least stick to. Everything else, I'll try to add throughout the week. You know, sometimes we'll have some new stuff for you guys to see beyond the, the chat show. Yeah, um, and if you guys think of anything, leave a comment. Yeah. Let us know. Is there is there anything that you want to add to that, Frankie, like, uh, that, that you think you want to want to see on the show? No, that, everything, everything we've talked about, that pretty much covered it. I mean, okay. okay. As it comes around, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get more uh, options available. Yeah, and, and when I talk about, you know, uh, reviews, uh, I review damn near anything Star Wars, like I said, man. I'll review... A freaking sneaker if i get my hands on it <laughs> you know to show you and guys what it looks and i have <laughs> yeah so i mean it, if i can get my hands on it man and they have it in person i will put that on camera so you guys can check it out it's because some, you know, i just like showing this stuff with you guys i mean i, I see um sometimes some uh, toys and statues that are uh, very limited very you know uh, highly sought after very very difficult to find pieces you know you'll see on this show sometimes um, I know a ton of artists down here in South Florida that work on uh, specifically Star Wars art and things like that. That's just like one-off pieces, you know, and I could share you guys, uh, uh, share that with you guys. You could see uh, some different things other than the stuff that you see every day from Hasbro, Sideshow, and all and, and all the other guys, you know. So. And I'm big into 3D printing, and I found a yeah. bunch of Star Wars groups that have uh, STL files for, for that. That's what I wanted to say. I, I totally forgot about that. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Model building. Uh, Frankie and I both are very much into model building. Uh, that's something else that we may do sometimes. Maybe a live stream of us building whatever model is we have in, in hand. Uh, I just recently put together the the Falcon from uh, uh, from Diagostini. That was a two month build. So <laughs> I, I can show everybody a rare yeah. Captain Cardboard X Wing. Yeah, you know, and we can we can take and uh, and do stuff like that. I think that that'll be a lot of fun having a live stream and just shooting the shit with everybody while we're. You know, putting stuff together. Lego builds, too. I got got a few of those, too, that I still got to finish up. Might even so, have a Bondi kit giveaway. You never know. Yeah. Dude, I do want to get into the Bondi kits, man. I, they're I, fun. Ever since I, they're fun, man. They're a lot of fun. And they're easy to put together. I mean, it's all snaps, so you don't need any glue. And then if you yeah. just want to go the route within the box, I mean, they've got uh, water slide decals, stickers, whichever yep. way you want to go. They got some that light up, too, man. I, I thought that those were pretty. I missed out on the Star Destroyer. I was going to buy it that day at the, at the comic book store. And, you know, I was like, okay, I'll come back next week. And every time I tell myself that, I'd like slap myself in the faces because it's like, it's never there. You know, it always goes away by that point. You know, I should, first mine, I should just buy it yep. when I see it. Just buy it when you see it. <laughs> deal with it. Put it on the credit card. I'll deal with it later. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we got planned for you guys on the show. Uh, now, you know, I want to go ahead and, and move into the hyperdrive giveaway that's for the group here. Um, so this was a... This is what we got to give away. It's a Mandalorian skull plaque from Regal Robot. Um, this is not the one that I'm giving away. The one that I'm going to be giving away, or the one that the group is giving away, is actually going to be sealed. So this is mine personally. So that way, you know, you guys can have the fun of opening it up on your own without my fingerprints on it. Although maybe you want my fingerprints on it. Maybe you want me to sign it. Let me know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I hear I'm big in Japan. So <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, it comes with a Star Wars Regal Robot. Thank you. And does it get anything else in here? 
And if you don't know about Regal Robot, they got some really good oh, products. Too. Top notch. And I want so much from them, man. Um, later this I week, know. one of the things I want to talk about, I don't know if you, you've got time to talk to me about it. I got, I'm going to have uh, Joseph on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about the Hollow Chess piece. Is that yeah. that we got coming yeah. out for May the 4th? Dude, I am. I so want that. <laughs> yeah, so do I. My wife said no. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much it's going to cost, but... You know, I want it. All right. So, okay. So this comes off like that. Whoa. Okay. Leave that there. Wow, this is heavy. Got a little weight to it. So there is the plaque right there. Oh, my goodness. Make my screen a little big here so we can, these guys can get a good view of it. There you go. Yeah. So I thought this looks really awesome. I have the bigger version. The 18-inch the one is above me. But it, I love that it looks like the uh, the shoulder plate from Boba Fett. They did that that nice yellow in the background and everything, and then you got a uh, spot here to mount it. The detail is really nice. This this is a really awesome giveaway. Uh, big thanks to Peter Lawrence who hooked us up with this, uh, hooked up the uh, the Hyperdrive group up with this man because these are some awesome giveaways. They, they last time they gave away a uh, a sideshow R two D two six scale figure in the group. Which um, which was awesome, and I love being able to, to be the guy to give them away. But at the same time, it's like I kind of want to participate. <laughs> yeah. It's like I. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, I'm seriously probably going to get on the website now after this because <laughs> that <laughs> thing is awesome. <laughs> right. This thing is dope. <laughs> this thing is really really dope. That's going so, next to my helmet. Yeah, I think it would look really good next to the helmet. Next to uh, it, it, it can go good next to the statue, you know, or, or just there on the wall by itself. Next up picture. Uh, you know, Boba Fett's, Boba Fett's the man, bro. Dude's awesome. And I um, never believed he died. Yeah, you know Just what? so everybody when I, when knows. I, he he, back, I didn't believe that for one minute. When I was a kid, I thought he died. And then when I, when I heard he came back in the comics, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I saw him in the video game. I think when I saw him come back in the game was one of the, um, the Jedi Knight games. I think is when I first saw him uh -huh. in the video game again. And I was just like, oh, it's Boba Fett. You know, it's like, it's cool. So... Uh, it's really awesome to see him come back in the Mandalorian, man. I, that was that was really dope. Well, I so, saw him in the holiday special, and then so when I see him okay. in the movies, that was even better. So who's so, the lucky winner? Well, I'm gonna we're gonna do a little spin right here, and I'm gonna share with you guys that. Before we get into that, I want to thank you gonna and make sure everybody thanks the admins of the Hyperdrive Group. So I name you guys. Everybody deserves a shout out. So first of all, Peter Lawrence, you're the man. Thanks for giving this uh, piece so that we could give it away. We got James Irwin, Christian Alexander Golez. That dude is dope. Awesome guy. Uh, Tony Ducker, awesome guy. Randy Go, awesome guy. Emma Jane Hoff, awesome woman. The lady of the hyperdrive. Parminder, awesome dude. Jeff, awesome dude. Simon, you're awesome too. These guys are great. Awesome guys who set up this group. So make sure that you guys always, when you see them post something in the group, that you like it. Comment on their, on their post. Those guys deserve a whole lot for, for setting this group up. So, you know. Let's uh, let's go into the giveaway. Yeah, Again, I'm a member of a lot of Star Wars groups and Hyperdrive. A lot, I mean, drama free and just everybody's yeah. so encouraging and just so so welcoming. Yeah, that, and I love that, man. I like I like the fact that nobody, there's no drama, nobody's fighting, nobody's yep. telling people you know what they don't like and all that stuff. We're just expressing our love for this. So uh, what we have here is the uh, Wheel of Fortune, and. Um, or maybe we'll come up with a different name for the Wheel of Fortune for Star Wars. I don't know. Do they have a Wheel of Fortune in Star Wars? I don't, I don't think so. We'll yeah, come up with a so. name for we'll it. We'll come up with a name for it. Anybody uh, got suggestions? Leave a comment. Yeah. Yeah. Also, a, a, a naming suggestion for this particular uh, show. Because obviously when we start having different shows, you know, Hyperdrive is going to be kind of like one encompassing channel. And then we're going to have like different things. So I don't know. I was thinking about calling this the Cantina Chat. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that one. That makes sense. Uh, a lot of things yeah. get talked about in the cantina. Actually, absolutely, man. You got your libations going. Everything's great. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So again, everybody that participates gets a shout out. So let's do this. These are everybody that participated in the giveaway. And what you had to do was you had to invite somebody to the hyperdrive group. Once they were accepted in the group, you tagged them in a post. Then we're trying to come up with a different name or a different way to say this is the way it's because 
Uh, the guys thought that that's being overplayed out, thought it would be fun to try to figure out a different way to say that. So um, everybody that, get, that participated gets the opportunity to be in this, uh, this random drawing. So we got Jacques Daniel. We got uh, Dakota Medley, Sebastian Cooch or Kook. I hope I'm saying that right. Siegfried Probst. I, I, and I, if I messed up your name, and I'm totally sorry. There's, some of these names are a little hard for me to pronounce. <laughs> he messes um, up my name sometimes. I do. I do. I'm old. It happens. Uh, Steve Stephen Eccleston. We got John Smith. That see, that's the type of name. There you that go. I <laughs> Michael <laughs> Williams, Maverick. We got Bastian Schaefer, Mimi Mink, uh, Minka. We got uh, Sabrina Aiden. We got Mikel, uh, Mr. Buck, Buckcherry. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Annabel Guerrera. Uh, or Guerra. We got Remy uh, Pignouf. We got Jeremy Descalis. Santino Bertucci. We got uh, Anthony Helen Cooper. Helen Cooper, sorry. Uh, Thomas Martin. Caleb Davidson. Chris Og Oglesby. And uh, Derek Liddell, or Lydell. So that's everybody that joined in. And then we put everybody into this spinner. And I got it set to spin for 20 seconds. So it's going to be a nice long spin. And then we'll get a name, and that person will win. So here we go. I'm glad you have to do that. <laughs> when it gets bigger, <laughs> I'm going to have to try to find a different way of doing it. You get like a maximum 100 names for this. And the winner is... Oh, stop. Caleb, Caleb Davidson. Congratulations. You are the lucky winner, man. That is awesome. You know, we're, one, of the, one of the group admins is going to contact you. Or if you see the video, you know, you can always contact us. But I'm pretty sure uh, one of us is going to contact you. <laughs> you know, that, that's our job. So, <laughs> but yeah, man, congrats, bro. You're, I think you're going to really, really like this, this wall plaque. Uh, I really love mine. You know, it gives me the whole... Boba Fett vibes, so that's that's really dope. And that's it, man. That's our first episode of the Hyperdrive. So I had a good time with this, bro. I'm, I'm actually really happy that we got a chance so to do this. So excited about it. Yep. Yeah. Can't, so, can't go wrong having a day spent talking about Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's funny. It's like, I don't know why we didn't do this sooner. It would have been easier to do this back at the beginning of the pandemic when we had a lot more time. So, <laughs> but now, now it's like, okay, we're... You know, I always got to make, I got to, I act better under pressure. I think that's what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> Perform better. George is a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for joining us for this, holo, this first hollow transmission of the Hyperdrive channel. Until next time, guys, keep it marvelous. Keep it marvelous. May the force be with you. And keep it marvelous. May the force be with you. <laughs>